Well, good morning, Sioux Falls. Uh, it's good to have you here today. This is another listening and learning session. And as you can tell, uh, we're, we're outdoors uh, here in, in the, uh, the city of Sioux Falls. And to make this one special and unique, we're on the east bank of our downtown. Uh, more specifically, we're at 8th and Railroad. And what I wanted to do today was to engage, uh, you know, people that are involved in, in this vibrant East Bank, this incredibly fun, uh, unique, uh, and yes, growing part of our, of our city and in our downtown. Um, we're gonna talk to some shoppers, probably some eaters, number of business owners, but really to get us started today, I wanted to bring in Steve Tinklenberg. Steven is a general manager for 8th and Railroad here. Um, he's been involved in, in really the, the dreaming and, and uh, uh, the vision of this really, really bustling uh, part of our town. And I thought he'd be a great one to, to kind of get us started here today. So, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind joining us, first of all, uh, welcome. Thank you. You had Thanks for doing this here today, Stephen. Now, earlier off camera, you said, um, you know, really years back, you were kind of, you know, dreaming about what this could become, uh, the, this East Bank. But maybe more specifically, tell us about Eighth and Railroad. What, what was it and what has it become? Well, it's kind of interesting because the dream actually belongs to Erica Billion. Okay. And Erica, uh, when she took over this building in 2004, had a vision for what she wanted to do here. And so she hired me in 2006. Okay. okay. So um, I, all the credit here really goes to Erica and, and her drive to make this uh, an exciting place to be. So what, what, what was it then, just a, what, an old building that uh, now it's certainly filled with businesses, but, but so what was it then and what is it now? What does it become? Well, at the, in 94, it was, uh, it was purchased by Marv Luby and um, Erica bought it in 2004. Um, but it was interesting because when you came over the viaduct, uh, the parking lot was basically empty. And Erica said, we need to get people down there. We need to get it. And after that, with in conjunction with uh, a number of the shop owners here, yeah. and uh, uh, we had a meeting, and um, the retailers branded it East Bank. East Bank, okay. And uh, uh, we were involved with downtown Sioux Falls in developing, uh, doing the first block party, hmm. uh, which had 300 people. And uh, this past one was uh, over 3,000. And so uh, it, it is, it, it, it's so changed. Uh, I, in all of the traveling and things I've done, uh, I don't think I know of a single place that has so dramatically changed in just 10 years. The, the transformation is, is incredible. And, and we'll talk about you know, where we've come, but later on in the program, uh, we're gonna talk about where we're going with the um, you know, the rail yard redevelopment project that we've got uh, just to the east of, of 8th and Railroad and, and so much more. And, and I think it's kind of funny. Uh, Steve talked about how he came over the viaduct and there was this empty parking lot. Uh, Joel, I don't know if you can get this, but the, uh, the parking lot is definitely uh, uh, less empty than, than what it used to be. And so, Stephen, tell me, what, how many shops are here just at the uh, 8th and Railroad alone? Well, there are 84 businesses. 84 businesses. That operate out of this building. Okay. And it's always intriguing to me when people visit here. Uh, they have no concept of how <laughs> the second floor looks and the third floor. And, and they come and they go through all the retail shops and okay. the restaurants that are here. And, and uh, it, it's almost, you can convince yourself that it's probably one of the best kept secrets in the country, honestly. Oh, I love it. So, I mean, people are working here. Uh, they're they're playing here. Do they live here too? Uh, across the street, we have the Crane Center. The Crane and the Center. Frank okay. We have 36 lofts there. Okay. And so th those are the only places that have residencies in. Okay. And so if I take the entire Eighth and Railroad campus, I figure there are about 500 people that work here or live here. Love it. So uh, okay. I know this is different than uh, kind of the Empire Mall area and, and Louise and 41st Street. That's got its own unique flavor to it. Uh, we know that Phillips Avenue has certainly changed and, and developed and, and that's certainly unique in, in its own way. But why in the world would people come to, to this area? Uh, what, what would attract them the most? 
Well, I think one of the things that you have is the wide variety. I mean, you yeah. look at the four breweries on a block. You look at, you know, we have a huge number of some of the top chefs in town, restaurants. So uh, we have unique shops here that you find things that you can't find anywhere else. So it becomes a real experience. And I visited with people from Philadelphia and Omaha and Kentucky and all over, and they go, this is just unbelievable to us, uh, well, uh, that people should be actually envious of us for having this here. Well, I know uh, my wife Cindy and my daughter Kylie, uh, they are huge fans of, of uh, this, this area. Uh, it is certainly, it's quaint, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's fun. And it, it is certainly, it's unique. You know, even the outside facade, uh, then you go inside to these, uh, these shops or these breweries, whatever, they, they've got uh, kind of some, uh, some uniqueness to it, uh, bringing back the old woods and the, the, st the beams and the pipes, and it's, so I, I love it. You're, you've, we've come a long way uh, here on, on the East Bank, Steve, but now with the, um, the rail yard redevelopment project, that 10 acres of land, where do you think we're going? What, what's, what's, what's coming? Or maybe, um, you know, coach me, what, what do we need? Oh, man, uh, that's a question I really haven't put a lot of thought into. But when, when people ask about that, I simply say, if you think the transformation of the last 10 years has been dramatic, you wait for the next 10. Because mm. you will not recognize uh, this area again yeah. 10 years from now when, when this is all, all complete and developed. Uh, but one of the things that happens here, particularly right in the middle of it, it will be Eighth and Railroad, obviously. And uh, one of the th one of the words that gets used so often uh, about people who work here, live here, visit here, uh, there's such an incredible sense of community. And I'll bet you'll hear that word numerous times uh, today, today while you do this. The, the this East Bank is its own community within Sioux Falls. Oh, the cooperation between all these businesses with all the special events. I mean, yeah, you have the Black Party, 605, Farmer's Market. I mean, there's all the special events that go on down here. Right. Um, it's, it's just, it's hard to duplicate. The um, latest business to open up in this area, I think it was John was telling me is, uh, is it a brewery? Remedy Brewing. Remedy, Rem Remedy Brewing. Mm -hmm. And um, who was it? Somebody said this is what the new Brewers Row or something like that. Well, you you don't even have to walk a block <laughs> to end up at four different breweries. <laughs> Call a cab, you know. <laughs> yes. You know? Well, um, I, I, that's that's fantastic. The transformation is 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 wonderful. Um, so quickly, uh, tell me about. Um, your role here in terms of, you said 80 plus businesses. 84 at 8th and Railroad. 84 at 8th and Railroad. Then we go across, you got Prairie Brewery, Crane Center, uh, other breweries, other restaurants, other retail. Um, so what, do you folks get together uh, once a month or once a quarter to build that community? How do you communicate with the, each other? Is that done through downtown Sioux Falls? Who drives it? Well, we put out a monthly newsletter here okay. at Eighth and Railroad, and we slip it under people's doors and and things like that. But but again, the communication level in the in the building is just incredible. Okay. Uh, you know, people uh, when you need uh, the back dock, for example, for a special event. I mean, there's a lot of effort goes to That's moving cool. stuff and making it available. And and yet the the whole thing, you know, ten years ago, eleven years ago, was to get people here. And the bottom line is, uh, we've we've succeeded in doing that can it get bigger and better absolutely I, there's no doubt about that all right i'm going to end it i'm going to end our our uh, conversation with a really tough question and i need you to be open i need you to be honest i need you to be real and and here it goes Stephen. you know we've we've also had some transformation in terms of how we serve you know the uh, some of the poor the needy the homeless and things like that in fact now they are near this 8th and Railroad Center uh, and, and more. We've got a lot of foot traffic uh, with folks that are going to different uh, organizations. You know, how is that going? Have you, it, there's got to be some issues that are happening. Um, you know, I don't know if safety is an issue or if you've seen, you know, any, any, but would you mind talking about that a little bit? Well, I mean, there are a number of facets to that question. There okay. are. Okay. Um, 
while there's more foot traffic, we rarely have issues with okay. uh, people stumbling in or right. whatever, but we also are proactive in discouraging them uh, from entering and disturbing other people. Okay. I mean, we're really, really proactive. Uh, in terms of the building security, uh, we have security service that comes yes. in. We have music uh, that plays basically all night. It's well lit. Okay. Um, I've had women who were a little bit apprehensive about working here at night, yep. and later on came and said, "You know, I worry no for, for nothing." Love okay. It. On Love the it. on the other hand, on the upside to that is the police department here has been incredibly responsive, and and uh, so we we trespass people immediately okay. and never see them again. Okay. Um, uh, e explain that trespass people this is something that um you know we've been we've utilized more and more since i've been your your mayor uh in the spirit of you know trying to hold people accountable and let them know that that um if they cause a disturbance that they're then they're going to you know, be held accountable and not not be welcomed back explain what that means trespass someone well, when the police department, when the police officers get here, they'll ask us, do you want us to trespass them? Okay. And it's a simple form that they have to sign, and if they are found anywhere on the property in the next six months, they're immediately arrested and okay. transported All off. Right. So, so word gets around, even in, in that community, that okay. you know, it's probably not a place to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, an occasional person sleeping on a bench, for example, out here? Yes. Okay. But again, uh, a simple phone call, okay. and it's usually handled. The, the, there are a couple things that are our concern is A Street, because of the traffic, uh, uh, speeding is an issue. Okay. Yep. The, I can cro the crosswalks are an issue. And that, that's I, a I, tell, I tell every yep. officer, I do not want to pick up pieces yep. and have a pedestrian get hit. Yep. I don't. And oh, the other, a, lot, a lot of jaywalking goes on here because there's just not a lot of uh, crosswalks. And then if there are, there's, there's no lights. Right. And, and the, the, the crosswalk gets heavily used. Yeah. Okay. And there are people who won't stop for pedestrians. Okay. And I okay. just am fearful someone will get hit. All right. The other thing is bicyclists, yep. uh, which a bike lane would really be helpful okay. to get them off the sidewalk. Um, okay. uh, but again, uh, we... I don't want to say we put the fear of God in them when we stop them to inform them, but yep. um, uh, we have a few of them that will cop an attitude yep. and cause a problem. I love it. I love it. Well, see, hey, thanks for kicking off this uh, listening and learning session. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to uh, you know your vision and I guess it's Erica's vision and more. Look what you've uh, helped to help build. And so let's uh, Joel, let's go out there now and engage some uh, other people here on the East Bank. Uh, this exciting and certainly transformational East Bank. Uh, Stephen, thank you. We're now at uh, one of the one of the uh, retail shops here at, at 8th, and, uh, 8th and Railroad called Simply Perfect, and um, I, I wanted to grab uh, one of the one of the patrons here uh, and the, the the family. And so, would you introduce yourself to the people of Sioux Falls? Hey, everybody! I'm Kristen Torkelson, and this is Harper and Oliver. Kristen. Uh, you're here early in the morning. It's a, it's a Monday, uh, doing probably some shopping. Yep. What draws you to Eighth and Railroad? Why why do you come here? Um, we come down here because we have a great relationship with all of the girls and the guys at Simply Perfect. Um, it's a great place to shop. There's no guys here right now. Um, we like to come down here and eat. And my husband also works near here. So okay, okay. Yeah. What uh, I mean, there's the there's the mall. There's um, 41st Street, there's um, Phillips Avenue, yeah. you know, all that stuff going on. Yeah. Why, why this area? What, what draws you the, the most other than the people? Well, it sounds really cliche to say shop local, but that's the business that my family is in. Um, we're into real estate, so okay. it's important for us to support the local people because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have a business either. So we do like to shop local. You know, I, I, I wanna talk about that just, just briefly. Uh, more and more I've been talking about sales tax revenue and how important that is and our inability to collect that if you folks go online and, and shop. Uh, I know it may seem convenient uh, to, to do it that way, but I think as Kristen said, shopping local is so critical, not only just to you know, maintain the vibrancy of, of, um, of, of Sioux Falls, 
um, these businesses, these jobs that are created, the improved quality of life, but also, folks, the tax revenue. The tax revenue is critical. And so as Kristen talks about shopping local, that's, uh, that's really a, a, a big, big thing. You talked about you eat here too, you shop here. Um, any, do you ever go to any of these special events they have around here too? We have been down to the farmer's market on okay. the weekend. We love doing that. Um, and we've been down to the 605 Summer Classic for some good music. Okay. You haven't because you're a child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do like to come down here for date night as well. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. yeah. Date night. With two little ones, date night would be a, a big deal. Date night is important. A big deal. Well, <laughs> Well, I thank you for thank you, engaging Mayor, the people of Sioux Falls. It's a, my latest listening and learning session, so you're, you're, you're coaching the people of Sioux awesome. Falls as well as all the people who watch um, while they're visiting. So, Kristen, Wonderful. thank you. Thank you. Still in, uh, in Simply Perfect, and now I just wanted to get, kind of get a perspective from uh, a, a business person here on, on the East Bank. You know, why in the world um, do did, did, did they pick this location? How's it going? And so let's, let's find out. Please, tell us who you are and... And how long have you been here at Simply Perfect? I'm Haley Schmidt. I have worked here for eight and a half years at Simply Perfect. Haley, that's so that's fun. since I was 14. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I guess when our owner, Penny Kleindens, decided to move to the East Bank, she saw, um, she had the foresight to see that the East Bank was going to become something 10 years ago or 11 years ago now. Yeah. So um, I think there's just a, she could tell the feeling was already here and we just were we just wanted to get in on it early so where was simply perfect 10 11 years ago oh well our first location was in her garage um and then okay. the first brick and mortar store was right across the street at the crane center okay and then about three years after we opened there we moved over here to eighth and railroad and we've expanded a couple times since then okay you said the word expanded so things must be going pretty well oh yes they're going so well here we love being downtown and um this building offered us um enough space to grow how as big as we needed to go so we opened threads in like 2010 2011 and then a year after that we opened um, we just expanded our store a little bit over to the other side too how many employees are at simply perfect i think we've got like 25 to 35. oh my mm -hmm. that, that wow that's so this was in someone's garage yeah <laughs> and now 10 years later 11 years later there's up to 35 employees in this Hoppin East Bank of, of Sioux Falls. I, I, I love it. So um, who comes here to shop? Are they uh, the locals, and, you know, as Kristen was talking about, or are they visitors? Is the word spreading about East Bank or, or our downtown? What do you, what's your flavor? Well, luckily we get a taste of both. Um, with the Hilton Garden Inn right across the parking mm -hmm. lot there, we get a lot of people traveling, plus any of the tournaments and concerts and that kind of stuff brings a lot of people to town. And so during the day, we'll sell them entire outfits so they can go to their concert that night. Oh, or, yeah. um, you know, they stop by and pick up something like um, from our Simply Perfect Sunday line, which is our private label. So it's kind of like a little treat they get to take back from South Dakota or from Sioux Falls to wherever they're from. Um, so we've got that. And then we've got, of course, our local customers who are diehard and they've been supporting us since day one so um how does the word get out there uh about the east bank um what is that how's that happening here <laughs> um well it's it's been kind of tough i won't yeah. lie um yeah. phillips avenue gets so much attention yes. and there's always so many great things going on but i think a really awesome thing is the first friday block parties in the summer that happen in our parking lot here um that gets a lot of people to the area and we get a lot of people on those nights that have never been in our store before so even if they aren't purchasing things at night they now know about us and they come back maybe on saturday or sunday or in, in the next couple weeks and come see us again i normally do my um uh, l and l uh, in, in the summer on Phillips Avenue, as, as you were talking about. And, and that's why I wanted to change it up a little bit and, and do something where we would maybe bring some attention to all the, the transformation that's happening on, on the East Bank um, and, and find out more, so, so good job. Now with um, the railroad redevelopment that's gonna happen in the years to come, uh, I mean, that's gotta make you excited too, more foot traffic, Mm -hmm. more businesses, but also maybe more competition. Talk about that. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with healthy competition. Um, yeah. You know, as a small business, everyone's in the 
in the company of supporting other businesses. We aren't looking to tear anybody down. And so um, just having more people here is going to bring, or more businesses here is going to bring more people. And so it's definitely not something we're worried about. Okay. Um, yeah, we're mostly excited about the rail rail yard. And then I actually live in the Whittier neighborhood. So oh. that just butts up right, oh right against East Bank. And so we're really jacked about that over there because it's just going, going to, uh, it's just going to create such a great environment to, to live and work and eat and play and do all those things that that you get to do in big cities. It's happening here. You know, and, and that's another part of this of this L and L is that not only is this transforming this area, but also the neighborhoods all around it, mm -hmm. such as Whittier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah. So do you walk to work? Um, I could. <laughs> I don't. Um, there are, it's it's not uh, I don't quite feel comfortable walking yet. Okay, um, there's okay. still some work to be done All right. on, along 8th Street there. Well, th th then don't leave me. Don't <laughs> leave me. I want to talk about that. Okay. Uh, I do. I love talking about the, you know, all the good things, but I also mm -hmm. love learning about the, the challenges. So um, here you are, a young woman uh, who is working, living nearby our downtown, mm -hmm. but you said there's still some work to do on 8th Street in terms of what making you feel safer? Yep. So, yep. Um, if you don't mind, yeah, have an no. open, have a heart to heart with the yeah, mayor on that. Of course. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I'm in the Whittier Residents Whittier Residents Association, yes. and we recently had a meeting with a lot of the other neighborhood associations. Okay. So, um, we talked about just the walkability, adding crosswalks, adding street lights, adding those kinds of things that make it safer for pedestrians. And then, along with that, on Eighth Street, we have a lot of people that just kind of wander around all day. Yes. And so, um, you know, they they definitely bring a, a special color to our neighborhood. Yes. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of. Uh, Keeping, making sure that they're safe and we're safe and that nothing happens at, yeah. <laughs> nothing happens to any of it. No, uh, we don't, I, you know, we're not looking it. to uh, rid anybody of the, the necessities that they need, but. Good job, good job. Well, I thank you for mm -hmm. engaging me today. Great job, keep it going, keep growing, keep uh, that vision going, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to, to learn from you today. Oh, thank Great you. Great job, keep working hard. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. I love this um, uh, learning, listening uh, about the things that are happening on the east side of uh, our, our river, the east side of our downtown, uh, and, and all the, the good things that are happening. And one of the persons who's leading that charge is is this uh, is this person. And so please introduce us to the people of Sioux Falls and, and what do you do? Absolutely, my name is Brian Maynard and I am the Vice President of Downtown Sioux Falls, Inc. We are a nonprofit corporation and we're really just committed to beautifying the downtown area, being an advocate for the downtown area and bringing the business community together as well as the residents. I've been with the organization for five years, okay. but the organization has evolved. We used to be called Main Street Sioux Falls, which is a national organization and we transitioned over to become our own nonprofit entity and really partner more with the city of Sioux Falls back in the 90s. So okay. we've been around for quite a while. How big is it right now? How many businesses, yeah. organizations are part of downtown Sioux Absolutely. Falls? Absolutely. So DTSF offers a business membership and right now we are strong at about 240 members. Oh yeah up top for that. Um, and then we also are looking to hone in on those uh, residential uh, members as well. So okay. we have 2,300 people now living in downtown Sioux Falls, calling it their home. So it's been a really interesting journey to get to this point where, you know, we have all these business, we have the business community who's really passionate, but then we also have people that are like, this is my home. This is where I live. And I want to make sure that this is the best place for me. And so they're coming out of the woodwork and helping us advocate on behalf of those, you know, that live in the downtown area. Sioux Falls, I think that's something that uh, people probably need to get a better flavor for. And, mm -hmm. and that is that, uh, Brian mentioned that this is now the place to live. Mm -hmm. And when you've got 2,300 people living in downtown, I mean, that's a, that's a big town for the city of Sioux, for the uh, state of South Dakota. Absolutely. I mean, 2,300 people, there's a lot of, uh, that, that's a big town. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was first elected mayor, I know that I took some heat because my goal was not to get people, you know, playing downtown or working downtown. My ultimate goal was to get people living downtown because mm -hmm. uh, I just thought that that was the way to, you know, kind of keep that blood pumping all the time, Absolutely. every hour of the day, every day of the week. And, 
and I think the blood's pumping. Oh, absolutely. And I know the business community appreciates it too, because those Thank are you. their customers. You know, those that live here and those in the adjacent neighborhoods. We talked about the Whittier neighborhood, All Saints neighborhood. So we've really developed a relationship with those adjacent neighborhoods as well to make sure they're in the loop as to what's happening down here, to make sure that we have the, the proper programming that they're looking for, family friendly, something for date night, that sort of thing. So we're standing in the East uh, 8th and Railroad parking lot. This is where we program our first Friday block parties okay. throughout the summer months. They've just become incredibly popular. Um, we're prob we're kind of bursting at the seams at this point where, you know, the, the vending that we have in this area is overflowing. We're always asking, they're always asking for more food trucks, you know, more, more, okay. more. So we're doing a good thing. And um, I just don't think there's any signs of slowing down. We're just going to need to figure out how to, you know, continue to, to change with the times and really listen to what the people want. Thank you. Now that first Friday, tell me about, so it's yeah. the first Friday uh, of, it starts in what, June, June and goes to through September. Through September. Yep. Okay. Sioux Falls, you heard about that first <laughs> Friday in, on the East Bank. Uh, sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of fun activity. It's really fun. Now, Brian, this, this kind of started, um, folks, I don't know if you remember, but there used to be this old white river ramp and it was right over our Big Sioux River. Mm -hmm. I. I still find it fascinating that somebody thought that was a good idea way back when. Uh, but, you know, honestly, it was our busiest parking ramp, uh, our most profitable parking ramp, um, and fully paid for, uh, good location. And then this mayor wanted to tear it down as one of the first things that, uh, that he wanted to do. And, yep. and tear it down, we did. Uh, but really, would you mind, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. Tell us about how the transformation happened. We had the uh, the river ramp tore it down. CNA came. Hilton Garden in. Give us some idea of what's happened and, and what's next. Well, goodness, you know, I I know you were inspired by the San Antonio River Walk. Yes. And. We've been, two years ago, we were named as one of the, East Bank was named one of the neighborhoods that was about to blow up. Well, it's blowing up. So good job. Up top to you, Mayor, for <laughs> that. Um, All right, here, I can't leave yes. you hanging. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but the, the landscape has com completely changed in such a great way. This has become a tourist destination. This has become a place that's walkable for people. So you did take away a parking ramp, but there's plenty of parking in downtown Sioux Falls, yes. as you well know. And it's really easy to get around. You can ride your bike along the bike path to get where you need to go. You can walk, you can still drive and park. And it's just become this really vibrant center. And I, I'm just so grateful for you know your vision and okay. the city's vision. And you know I, I just really think that was the thing that we needed to to take us to the next level so really love this area it's it's one of the crown jewels of the city for sure uh, my last question is so give me the boundary of down what is yeah. downtown what is yeah. it is it uh, uh it seems like it's minnesota, minnesota. A okay minnesota avenue to the to west, the west. 14th to the south. 14th to the south. And then it, it's a little tricky down here, but Falls Park Drive. Falls Park Drive to the north. To the north. And then over to like Weber. Okay, Weber. And it kind of, okay. yeah, so it's it's a good chunk. So that's downtown. That's downtown. But and uh, the east bank certainly is from what, the east side of the river? Yes. To Weber? To about Weber. To about yep. Weber, yep. okay. So what we're talking about today is the east bank. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's the Big Sioux River mm -hmm. in downtown towards Weber Avenue uh, as, as our perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we've got this 10 acres of land we're gonna redevelop. Yeah. Um, I'm not, it's not gonna be done in my tenure, but, but you know, what, what do you think is possible? Oh my goodness, anything's possible really, we've seen that. But you know, it would be really great to see another you know, gathering space yes. for people, a place where people can come and enjoy entertainment. A, an open market has been discussed, okay. which I think would be fantastic probably some more parking. Yes. We need some more parking yes. for sure. Yeah. Um, an ice skating rink, you know, just those community amenities that bring families and, and you know, big groups of people downtown would really be fantastic to see. Okay. okay. And more retail. And more retail. Yeah. And, <laughs> so and did you get all that? Sioux Falls, there is more retail. I, 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 you, you can't imagine what's going on in downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, what, was it uh, USA Today just named at least Phillips Avenue one of the 
yes. top downtowns for retail or shopping in yes. America. Yes, one of the best shopping streets in the nation by, that was Robert Gibbs, okay. who was an urban retail consultant okay. who came in um, and presented to our annual meeting, met with city leaders. This guy has been to thousands of downtowns and was impressed by ours. So that was a huge feather in our cap for this gentleman to come in and say, you're doing a lot of things right and you have a lot of potential and a lot of momentum going. So, oh my, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Sioux Falls, if this guy can fly in and think that we've got one of the yeah. top 10 retail downtowns in, in America, you need to come downtown too. Absolutely. And uh, so, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you again. Yes, Thanks you too. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. you thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm walking down the street and and uh, I, I meet this beautiful person. Oh. And so I had to come engage her and find out she's from Lincoln, Nebraska. And guess what, Sioux Falls? Her family just moved here and she's visiting. So please, would you introduce yourself to the people of Sioux Falls? Well, I'm Liza Sams from Lincoln and I love your city. Thank you. We've Th been up and down and around and driving all over and it's wonderful. Well, your first visit to Sioux Falls? Uh, I've been here three times, but this is the first time I really did it in. Okay, okay. Great. Th are you a Nebraska girl then? Born and raised? No, I was raised there, but Razor. I was born okay. back east. Okay. Now, uh, sorry, but your your family members, a couple of them are moving here to Sioux Falls. They have moved here. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to talk to them, too. Okay, well, uh, we're all happy to be here. Thank you. Thank, are you spending any money while you're here? Uh, um, you want to look in the back of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, right so, along here I spent quite a bit. <laughs> can, can we talk about that? We um, uh, Money, yeah, okay. Well, today... Uh, today we're talking about how this part of our town is really developing. We call this the, the East Bank, 8th and Railroad. So why did, why did you find this an, an intriguing place to, to spend some of that money? What, what, what did you like about it? Well, the, the specialty shops. Mm. The plum, which was great for kitchen, because I love kitchen stuff, and I'm a sucker for flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been here before because we've stayed one weekend when you had your jazz festival on yes. the river we love that okay and then i had come to a four-day conference out at the ramcota mm. so i've been sneaking up but never visited like we have today very good well i know your lincoln is really really a, a hopping downtown too it's uh, coming but not quite like this did you just hear that <laughs> wait a second Wait, did, wait a second here. Did you just catch that? Uh, okay, Mike. That's no, 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 no. I, I thank you. That that um, we are always trying to compete against. Uh, I call it the big boys and the big girls. And and in the uh, uh, before I was the mayor, yeah, I guess we'd consider our competition. Oh, a Rapid City and and Sioux City and, and Fargo and things like that. And then I said, no, we want to compete uh, against the, 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 the Lincoln, Nebraska's, the Minneapolis, Minnesota's, the Austin, Texas's. And so that's why when you said that even uh, uh, we're, we're doing well, even in comparison to Lincoln, that's why I got so excited. Well, so I, I think really you thank have you. every reason to get very excited because we've thank enjoyed you. it all. Thank you. So is your son that moved here? Yes, he well, had retired from Fargo and they picked out Sioux Falls. Oh, uh, well, very, then uh, I'm going to get the <laughs> son in here. Yeah, son, get in here, buddy. Yes. You're not getting out of, right. you're not getting away. I got your mom. Mm -hmm. Now I got you and your bride. Yes. Please. This is my Could, bride, Leslie. Leslie, again. Mm -hmm. And I hugged Leslie off camera, so I don't know if you, you saw did. it. Yes. And he hugged me off camera. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, but welcome. Welcome Thank to Sioux Falls. Thank you. First, introduce yourself to the people of your new hometown. Uh, my name is Tom Sams, and this is my, my wife, Leslie Sams. And we moved here in middle of May mm. uh, from Fargo. So, oh, from Fargo. Yeah. And from I was Fargo. fortunate fortunate enough to be able to retire at 64. Yes. So, yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. uh, um, why? Um, why Sioux Falls? Well, uh, I mean, you're closer to mom. Right, that was one reason. Yep. And uh, the tax uh, okay. friendly state was yep. another reason. And the more that we drove around Sioux Falls, the more that it, it you know, was a good match for us. We like the downtown. Yep. Um, yep. We live out east of town at a golf course. And uh, it was just a fun place to, you know, all the pieces came together for us. So, uh, you're. Um your impressions. I mean, Fargo's a really nice town too. I just ran a half marathon in Fargo, huh. and loved it. 
Uh, it's booming. Uh, it's got a nice downtown, but you chose Sioux Falls to to retire or spend those those uh, fun, active generation years. W w give me your your thoughts uh, first. Can I? I'm going to ask you a tough one. What you've been here since May? Right. What's missing? What's missing? Well, that's hard because we've just started to explore. Okay. And so far, we've found more than we like. You know, versus more than what's missing. Okay. Oh, I just thought of one. Please. A, a movie theater that shows independent and foreign films. Mm -hmm. Well, and actually, that may be coming. The uh, the State Theater in downtown, uh, that is being um, rebuilt, refurbished right now, and that's one of the topics that they're they're talking about is once it's done to bring in those kind of independent. Um, uh, film. So I hope that we can get, make that happen for you. I do too. Yeah. It, then it'll be perfect. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, what, what what do you think? What's what's missing uh, from your perspective? Um, I would agree with Les, what Leslie said. Okay. Uh, you know, she enjoys the independent films a lot. I enjoy going to them too. So I, I think that would be you know the one major thing that that's missing. Um, of course, we hope the winters are a little bit more mild than Fargo. Well, they they if are. You can promise that. I, I, they they are it definitely. Look at those cool, like red holes on the fire hydrants. Ah, uh, that's for snow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what was what's been your biggest surprise? I think all the parks uh, oh. in in town. I think that's been a, a big surprise. We have we have a park. Uh, within a half mile of every home in mm -hmm. our town, mm -hmm. that was a that's a goal that we've got. Um, uh, it's expensive, uh, but yes, there's mm -hmm. 80 parks in in our in our town. Okay. Yeah. And and I think the other thing is that we really enjoy is the activity downtown. Yes, yeah. whatever day it is, there's there's activity good. down there. I was so. pleasantly surprised, yeah, about the vibrant downtown and and um, all the activities that take place. That there's always something going on. Um, we're on the East Bank. We call this the East Bank. Right. And um, I mean, what what kind of attracts you to the East Bank? Um, you know, I would say I like that it's a little older. Okay. Yeah, I, I really do like that. I, you know, as Liza mentioned earlier, the specialty shops yes. that are just a little different, rather than the big box yes. and the chain, that really draws me to an area. Thank you. Have you eaten down t on the East Bank or had a beer on the East Bank? We've eaten at several places. Yeah. We've probably eaten out more than we've eaten at home. So. <laughs> for research. Yeah. For research. Research, yeah. research and development. <laughs> yeah. Our little R&D on yeah. the East Bank. Right. I love it. I yes. love it. We have we, eaten down here. We've eaten at Kay's. We've eaten at uh, Prairie, Prairie Berry. Berry. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Those two places. We've eaten at Crave. Oh yeah, and, oh, then, and then several downtown. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, we've also it was called Brewer Brewery's Row or Brewer's Row now, mm -hmm. and uh, so that you know, I don't know if you drink beer, but I guess it's a, a I do. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I mean, that's another thing mm -hmm. specialty. Yeah, yeah, and there's a new one that just opened right down yes. here. I, we yeah. haven't been in there yet. And, and I guess they had a monster grand opening. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, Sioux Falls uh, and anybody watching, I love it. We've got first of all new people coming into town to live here. Uh, and spend just you know their active generation he years here in, in Sioux Falls, but also you know I, I get mom coming all the way from <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, to celebrate not only your family but also our, our town too. So it started with you, and so thank you for <laughs> engaging us today. <laughs> thank you very you much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Sioux Falls, was that fun or what? You, you, I love my job. You never know who you're going to meet, uh, and, the, and the memories that you'll create uh, along the journey and. And now, uh, again, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, after that interview, I, I've come across, uh, upon two young professionals who've made Sioux Falls not only the place to, uh, to live, but also the place to start and own and manage and drive that entrepreneurial business. And so please, introduce yourself to the people of our town. Please. I'm Sarah Young, I'm originally from Minnesota, but moved over here. Uh, I love it. Been Sarah. here for about 10 years. Sarah, thank you. And who's this guy? This is Eric. Eric? Uh, my name is Eric, and I work for the company that Sarah owns here in the 8th and Railroad building. Um, I'm originally from Minnesota and transplanted over here. I went to college at Augustana and never left. All right. So, Sarah, um, Eric, why the East Bank? I mean, we're a, a city about 80 you know, mile, square miles. Why 
choose the East Bank, Sarah? It's a great location down here. Um, you've got all the restaurants and the shops and the people, so we just like the atmosphere down here. We like the building, we like the building manager, so I don't know, it's just a good spot. Well, uh, tell me, tell us, what do you what do? You do? What's, your, what's your business? I have Premier Bookkeeping and Business Services with my partner, Andrea Eden, and so we do any kind of small business, um, Anything from just the regular bookkeeping to a little bit of marketing, a little bit of ad, um, website design and business cards kind of thing. Anything a small business would need. Okay. And then we work with, I don't know, we work with anywhere from small to mid-sized companies in Sioux Falls. How, how's it going? Awesome. <laughs> crazy <Love> good. <laughs> crazy good? Yes. All yes. right. Now, now wait, because uh, I got uh, behind the scenes, you can't see this, but... Darren Ketchum, the community development guy, who we'll talk to next, uh, uh, said you said awesome. Yes. Yep. Okay. So I got two Minnesota people coming into South Dakota, mm -hmm. starting this business, mm -hmm. and it's going awesome. Yep. Uh, there's all kinds of competition in town. Yep. Are you? What are you talking about? Um, well, when we first started, so Andrea and I both had part-time bookkeeping, and we kind of merged three years ago, about three years ago, and. I don't know, it just, when you work with small businesses, they refer you on, and that's where we get a lot of our business. We advertise the first few months, first six to nine months, and everything after that has just come to us, and every one of our customers is great. There's not one bad one that we have. We just love everybody, and oh, it's just that small town good feel. I don't know. Thank you. Uh, why, uh, you could go back to Minnesota, and are your mom and dad still there? Yes, my family and my wife's family, everybody's back there. Um, I guess I really like Sioux Falls as I tell everybody, you know, there's a lot of people in Minneapolis that haven't spent any time here, but I like to say it's a it's a big small town. And I really like that. You can go around town anywhere and see all sorts of people you don't know. You can go anywhere and meet meet people from all over the country. I mean people just passing through or people have family here and hear their stories and I don't I can't remember a time I've ever met somebody from out of town and said, Man, I don't really like Sioux Falls. They said I really like this town. Okay, young people. Uh, I thanks for the kind words. Thanks for your business, but a tough question, and you gotta hit me with it. So, what do we need to improve on in Sioux Falls? Go. I'd say clean up around some of the main streets a little bit, um, kind of driving down Minnesota a little bit, and then more space down here. There's not enough for our size business. And we don't want to leave. <laughs> we love it down here. So more office space of our size Did you get would that be day? awesome. <laughs> yeah, we Why? have six employees, well, six of us total, and we could hire on two more, but we can't really fit any more upstairs. Oh, wow. So like our size, I feel like, is tough to find spot, you know, space. OK. And I think we'll talk about that next. We've got to, right, right behind you is that uh, the 10 acres of land we purchased yeah. from Burlington yep. Northern and so we are going to begin to, you know, dream big, uh, build big, and find uh, you know more, more places to live, more places to play, and more places to work. Yeah. And so I think that will come. That's awesome. Uh, I'm not going to get it done in my term, but um, uh, I I think you're going to see that. So thank you, and thanks for your you know making this happen in Sioux Falls, uh, young entrepreneur. I'm proud of you, yes. and um, really. Thanks for waiting to talk to me. Oh yeah, that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I want to say yeah. hi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love I love being your mayor and and just keep working hard. Oh, thanks. All right, Sounds great. good. And so yeah, again, your mom and dad are away, but yeah, tough question. What do we need to do better in Sioux Falls to to make you even more excited about your 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 new home? Um. Obviously, I'm from the Minneapolis area, so there's a few things that I miss that uh, we don't have around here. There's a, couple of restaurants they have up there and things we don't have around here that I know there's many other people from up there that um, would like to see those come around here and yeah. I think it's coming there's a lot of new things coming um, we're really excited when the Slotsky's Deli open because there's yes. still one of those up in the cities and yes. we love to go there all the time so um, I think it's it's a balance of keeping that kind of small town feel that I like but bringing in a lot of those things that some of the bigger cities have that yes. we don't have here yet yeah is Cheesecake Factory one of them no, actually. Wait, I got a yes over here. Yeah. <laughs> I like Cheesecake Factory. Um, my specific example is going to be Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah. yeah. 
No, oh my. I've my, heard a lot of rumors. My so. daughter Kylie would support that 100. percent I know, I know. Yeah, Chipotle, so. Chipotle, and cheesecake factory. <laughs> <laughs> We're ending on that Sioux Falls. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun on the East Bank of of our downtown, uh, talking with uh, people shopping, people working, building new businesses, uh, the leaders that are helping to. To, to make this a reality. And one of those leaders actually is uh, a city director, works for the city of Sioux Falls. His name is Darren Ketchum. And Darren, you're um, uh, the person really is responsible for trying to go to the next the next step, then the next level. Um, this East Bank is hopping, it's transformational. What do, you, what do you think is next? Well, Mayor, I think we look at uh just what that young, young uh, new Sioux Falls That's business right. owner said is what do we need more of? And we look at this space specifically down here, we're at 8th and Railroad, and this boutique space that allows new businesses to flourish is we need more of that. You know, we have other businesses that maybe they graduate from the Zeal Center for Entrepreneurship. They move down here, they grow their business, they add three, four, five people. They look for that next step and so we have to keep that going. We can't lose that momentum, that entrepreneurial spirit. Yep. And so we look at that, we look at what we have available, and we try to say, okay, we're gonna incorporate some of the historical features of our community, yet look to the future to achieve some different density. We don't want just office buildings. Yeah. We don't want just apartment buildings. We want mixed living, you know, where we can get some efficiencies with whether it's parking, some of our utilities. Doing infill development is such a great thing for Sioux Falls. We save on utilities, we save on other public services. Frankly, that is how we start to get business owners, residents, visitors, they come down here, they park their car for the weekend, yeah. or they maybe don't have a car at all, yeah. and they're a pedestrian. Yeah. And we're becoming a great pedestrian-friendly uh, community, and we, but it's not an accident. You, you said the word infill, and Sioux Falls, uh, j just a, a quick lesson on economic development, uh, how you can take space and make it more productive, uh, infill, explain that briefly. Yeah, so if we look at infill development, uh, say compare it to out in the outreaches of Sioux Falls, maybe in suburbia, I guess, yeah. if we're in downtown versus suburbia. But all of our city utilities are here. They exist in infill development. Uh, sometimes it's redevelopment. So so it's a it's a piece of land that's in your, the, the inner core of your, yeah. your city that's already been developed around it, mm -hmm. and now you're gonna take that piece of land and then develop it? Absolutely. So okay. we have 10 acres with our downtown rail yard, you know, more than a decade in the making. That would be considered infill, infill. development. We've okay. developed all around this island and now we finally have put forth all the effort necessary to secure the land. And over the coming decade or decades, we're going to work to infill that property okay. and create more and more opportunity. Okay. Uh, always a, uh, a hot topic, Darren, of, of our downtown and, and yes, even our East Bank uh, is that uh, sometimes uh, dirty word parking. Mm. Uh, tell, is there pl places to park in downtown yeah. and on, on this East Bank? Absolutely. Uh, this is a great example here at the East Bank. The, the owners of this building have made parking a priority to, to drive customers here because they know they have a great shopping experience. And this is a central location that they can project from. Spend some time at the East Bank, spend some time at Sharapa, spend some time over on Phillips, and it's all within a relatively close walking distance. Now we always need more parking. Parking yes. is one of those demands that... Yeah. Especially in South Dakota. Especially in South Dakota. <laughs> we, we all want to park at the front door. Just yes. like we grew up in our small town, yes. I park at the front door of the grocery yes. store and go in. But So we're, we look at those things, but we try to get a mix of development. So that way, maybe it's one customer uses parking during the day, during office hours. It's a different customer that uses that same exact parking space at night or over the weekend. And so we're not having to take this just precious land, this valuable space, we only have so much of it, and put something on there that doesn't generate, frankly, a lot of, yes. of uh, activity or money for, for business owners or for the city. And so we try to make the most out of the least amount of land as possible okay. with parking. Very good, Darren. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk to Mark later on uh, about the rail yard redevelopment. Um, could you just uh, very quickly 
Where are we at uh, when it comes to redeveloping that 10 acres of land? Uh, there were those RFPs. Could tell tell Sioux Falls where we're at. Absolutely. So we've done a RFP a request for a proposal process okay. where we received six. Um, responses from qualified companies that want to redevelop our 10 acres. We recently just completed the interviews with uh, the firms okay. um, and so now we're in that kind of uh, final process where we'll consolidate the, the scoring from their proposal, okay. the scoring from their interview, and then overlay that with the, you know, the, the city resources that we have to make this reality. And so I think within the next uh, month or so, we'll be getting further down the road where we can start talking about, uh, instead of it on a piece of paper, maybe it's on a board and we're standing out here talking about what this really can be. The, the next big thing for the East Bank. The, absolutely. The, and this will be the next big thing, not only for the East Bank, but for downtown Sioux Falls. Downtown. This is really going to connect our, you know, some of the things we have on Phillips, those amenities. We're going to be able to recreate some of those amenities and take it even farther in okay. the rail yard. Okay. Great. Well, Darren, uh, you're doing good stuff. Uh, thank you. I, I thank you. This, this uh, uh, downtown is, is as busy as it's ever been. Mm. Uh, but now this this East Bank is so much fun too. Uh, so again, keep dreaming, keep leading. Uh, just proud of you. Thanks, Mayor. The East Bank is going to be fantastic, and when we do these things, we look at the in, uh, generations. Yes. This isn't just for young people. Yes. It's not for active generations. It's not for in between. This is for everybody. Everybody. And so this can be a great opportunity, regardless of your age or what you do for a living. Everybody in Sioux Falls can enjoy downtown. So do it. See you downtown. Sioux Falls now uh, still on the East Bank, yep, uh, but I'm on the other side of, of 8th Street, um, across from 8th and Railroad. Now I'm in a, um, a kind of a, a business a part of, of the East Bank, and I'm at what's called the Creative Co-op. And uh, I've got some entrepreneurs here, some visionaries, and, and so I want to get you uh, a flavor for what's going on in other parts of the East Bank, or as Paul just told me, the best bank. It uh, is, it so, is. quickly, Paul, um, please tell, tell us your name and, and what you do first, and then I'm going to come back to all of you. Okay, so I'm Paul Ritter, and I'm in partnership with Lisa Brower, and we have a consulting business for companies to help with personnel issues. I mean, it's a coaching company that we do, and so we rent a small space here to do that and uh, help out you. companies in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Where are you from, Paul? Basically, Sioux Falls. Born and raised? Yeah. So you stayed? I stayed. Love it, love it. And Lisa, please. Yes, I'm born and raised Washington High grad when oh it was God. still downtown. And yeah, so we have Elevate Coaching. We do some leadership training and we help people excel in their, their leadership and learning. And we love being part of the co-op and Matt Paulson's part of our co-op too. And he has a very different business than what we do. Lisa, your, your, your first and last name though? Lisa Brower. Lisa Brower. Yes. You stayed in Sioux Falls, you stayed in Sioux Falls and you found a way to build your business and do it uh, here with uh, gram and grandpa and mom and dad and, and family and friends still around you. Yes, absolutely. A family is a big part of our business. Um, Paul and I both went to college here and that's kind of how we found our way back to each other after college as we separated for 20 years. He was the RD and I was an RA uh, at USF, so right, right here in Sioux Falls. Um, and yeah, so we were coming back and building a business uh, together as alumni of USF and then um, Sioux Falls Ites. So yeah. Thank you, Lisa, and I'm going to come back to you. Now, uh, you know the co-op well. Sure. Um, first, tell us who you are and what are you doing here at the co-op? So uh, my name is Matthew Paulson. I am the chair of Falls Angel Fund. I also run a financial media company called Market Beat. Uh, but what the Creative Co-op is, it's a small co-working space. There's about one, two, three, four businesses in here. We all kind of share the space. A lady named Mistin runs the place. It's been here probably for, I don't know, probably seven, eight years here in the Crane Building. But it's just been a nice way to have an office that's downtown in the vicinity of a lot of restaurants and coffee shops and places to meet. And just could not love being here enough. Mm -hmm. And my gut says that's why you call it the best bank. Yeah, because when I started thinking about starting a business, I went to Mitch, who started his business at Queen City, and I said, how do you get an LLC? It was mm -hmm. brand new for me. And he said, well, and he gave me some steps to do it over a cup of coffee. And I said, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And he said, if, you, if I did it, you can do it. 
So one thing led to another, and after that, then Lisa and I met, and we started two other LLCs with our businesses. And so it's just it's very creative. We're our own boss, collaborate together, go into companies and help, strategize. We love it. It's great. So, um, Lisa, why why the East Bank? Why downtown? Uh, why this co-op space? Because I know there's others in in town. I mean, what? And I know there's a unique vibe here. Yeah, but give me give give us your impression. Yeah, uh, I left corporate America to become an entrepreneur, and one of the things I missed was working with people. I mean, you you go from working with teams and then you go working in your home, yeah. and I needed a space to come and collaborate with people. So <clears throat> Matt and I we have very different businesses, but it's great to come as iron sharpens iron, and so we learn a lot from each other, even though we don't work directly together. Um, I love this space because it is small, it's creative, it's a, it is a creative space because just the building that we're in is great. Um, but a lot of entrepreneurs hang out downtown and I think that it's just uh, a welcoming place for entrepreneurs to share how they're building their businesses and uh, Matt is starting a, a new venture with the entrepreneurial group in town as well. He's trying to kind of stir up some people, a mentorship program and trying to stir entrepreneurial to take it to the next level in Sioux Falls. Matt, would you talk about that? Yeah, so we started a Facebook group. It's just called Sioux Falls Area Entrepreneurs, but in like two months, we've had 1,700 people join it. Oh my God. We've had four or five kind of in-person events to get about 50 people at those at a time. And just there seems to be a ton of interest in creating entrepreneurial community here in Sioux Falls. And I'm glad to be a small part of that. And I think we've got a couple of events coming up in the next you know, few weeks. Um, so hopefully we'll get a good turnout at those, but we're gonna do a speed networking event and we're also gonna have a happy hour uh, coming up soon too. Matt, thank you. Thanks yeah. for your leadership. Lisa, a tough question. Um, you know, there's some folks who talk about, uh, uh, you know, is it safe uh, here on, on the East Bank or, or uh, so give us your, your impression. Um, do you feel safe? I do, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I often work here by myself yeah. uh, at night or early in the morning, and oh, I have no reason to feel uh, unsafe here. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're, we're we're certainly doing our part to break down that uh, that misperception. But Lisa, thanks for for doing that as well. Um, Plus, I'm dang strong. So. And you are dang strong. I love that. I love that. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. I love That's it. Good. Love it. Uh, okay. So uh, quickly, and I. Your Sioux Falls boy who stayed, Sioux Falls girl who stayed. I thank you both. Matt, are you a Sioux Falls? I grew up in Mitchell. You're a Mitchell boy. Yep. So you're a colonel. Yep. It's, it's all right. I'm a Yankton buck, old sure. days. So um, I quickly, I'm, I'm always learning uh, as your mayor, always want to you know, reach higher and do something uh, to make us even better. I just quickly, and I'm going to start with you, Lisa. Uh, what do we need to do? differently or better that would make Sioux Falls even, uh, you know, better for you? I have, I don't know how to answer that <laughs> question. I don't know. Well, th that's it's, nice. Um, I think that Sioux Falls is a great place to raise our family. Yeah. Um, I actually just this week uh, spent the week in Moab, Utah, and it was a beautiful place. If you can bring some mountains to this end of <laughs> yes. to, to the end of the state, you know, bring a little bit exactly. of a different landscape. I would love that. Um, but other than that, this is the place that I've chosen to raise my kids okay. because I think that that having the faith and the values yeah. that we have is very important. And this is I, I wouldn't raise my kids anywhere else. Lisa, thank you, thank you. Can I go to, yeah. to you, Paul? I think you want to continue the momentum. And part of that, maybe there's not a lot of new creative ideas that, that could be out there, and maybe there is with bringing other people in from other parts of the country yeah. who maybe transition here through promotions and such and their, their ideas. But it feels like to me we're open to new ideas, integrating those things into our culture and our community that I'm getting caught up to. Now I'm 55, and I'm like, hey, it's more about community than just my career. And I think there's a lot of like-minded people that are like that. So it's continuing the momentum, I think, is a pretty big deal. I, um, I, little, I, today's my birthday. I just turned 55. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so Happy I, I'm with you, baby. <laughs> Happy birthday we, we look to good. you. Thank you. We look good. Don't, come on. <laughs> you look a little better. We'll no, go no, with no, you. No, you no. lead first. <laughs> thank, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for that, and thanks for staying. And then, yeah. you know, Matt, so please, uh, what you're, uh, you're here. Yep. You're building a business, you're helping to lead others, but what, what should we do to make us even better? 
Um, I think just a ton of great stuff is going downtown. I cannot wait for that East Bank to open up and, or with the railroad to move out. And to, yes. I mean, all that acreage for development. Yes. I mean, if we had, had twice of the East Bank, I mean, that would really make downtown a, a bigger spot on the map than it already is and just, you know, get people into these local businesses. And I'm just looking forward to the day when stuff gets starting built, you know, a yes. block east of here. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't thank you enough for letting me barge in. Uh, but your, your enthusiasm, even your, your smile, your energy, I, I really appreciate it. So, uh, uh, again, make it, a, make it a great day. And Sioux Falls, is, we're at the, the, uh, uh, the what shop? The cre Creative Co-op. Co co um, there is so much dreaming uh, going on right now in the city of Sioux Falls. I mean, uh, that's one of the parts that I'm going to miss about being your mayor is that when I look back at seven years ago, I had my own dreams on where I wanted this city to go, but there were thousands and thousands and thousands of others who also wanted to dream big. And uh, here's three of them. And look at what uh, they've done uh, here at the Creative Shop and, and so much more. And so um, we'll keep it going. And, and we got one more interview to go uh, here on The Best bank uh which is called the east bank of, of sioux falls thank you good job thank you, thank you all right sioux falls i uh, remember i told you about the most uh convoluted difficult project that i've i've had the pleasure to, to work with uh and yeah no it, it was not the event center uh no it, it wasn't the indoor pool uh no it wasn't the south side walmart no, it wasn't even the ice storm. Uh, the right. most difficult, convoluted project that, that honestly I, I almost gave up on. Uh, but thanks to the help of this man and, and, and others, I didn't, uh, was the rail yard redevelopment project. And, and I'm standing with uh, Mark Cotter, uh, Sioux Falls. He's the person um, who's in charge of public works, uh, you know, removing the snow, taking care of the streets, but also uh, he was the one who led the charge along with Josh Peterson in terms of getting that rail yard redevelopment project done. Uh, Mark, thank you. You're welcome. And Sioux Falls, we're standing actually on land that now the city of Sioux Falls owns. Um, we purchased it from Burlington Northern. Uh, we are just to the east of the 8th and rail, rail, rail Yard Center where we were at. We're on this east bank. We're on 8th Street. And so Mark, um, Tell us, first of all, you know, we got, we got 10 acres here. Uh, we got the viaduct all the way towards what, the, the falls a right. little bit. Right, Um What's gonna happen? I mean, wh what, what's, what's first? We, we own the land, so we start, what, we take some tracks out? What, what happens? Right, so we, um, in November will be two years that we've owned the land, and we gave, um, you know, anytime you move a big industrial uh, operation like a rail yard, uh, it takes time for them to build their new uh, area, yep. which is out by Great Bear, and so then they can start to change their operations. So in November, we'll actually own the land, and Burlington Northern will no longer occupy the yard. Okay. Um, that's when our fun can begin, where we start to remove the tracks. I know everyone has drove through these crossings on 6th and A Street for years, and they're rough. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, they'll be taken out. Uh, concrete will be put in. Um, and, you know, I just think it's reflective of how we've stretched uh, East Bank, and this will provide another 10 acres of land that can that you can walk and enjoy and really extend the downtown. Um, there's a lot of preparation that we have to do. So in 2018, there's, we're going to be removing the tracks for the whole yard. Okay. Uh, it's 10 acres. Uh, there's a freight building that will take down. Okay. And and then ultimately, since we will still have two tracks running through downtown, we're going to build a, a nice fence to really separate that more industrial activity to the new development. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of activity in 2018 uh, that really prepares the land for redevelopment. So 2018 is uh, when all the really fun stuff happens. That's right. Um, Mark, you talked about a fence. So you said not not all the tracks there, there's still gonna be two tracks left that's right there's still two tracks left and if you kind of fly up 5,000 feet and know that 
one of the tracks really starts in Madison, South Dakota area, okay. and comes right to the Y of Sioux Falls, and then would go down to Sioux City. Okay. There's another one that goes from the center of Sioux Falls out to basically Corson, and then on to Minnesota. Okay. That Y will still exist. Um, but no longer will all the switching and building and rebuilding trains happen in downtown. Okay. Um, Burlington Northern has new assets that they've built, uh, much more efficient um, out by Great Bear. And so now you'll just see trains pass through as opposed to what you see today is we see some trains that are parked. They came in on a long train. They had to then get broke apart. And then when they then their customers need them, they have to bring them, they have to okay. rebuild them again and get them out. So okay. operating in downtown, um, you know, when Sioux Falls was formed over a century ago, it was not, um, it was where the industries were. That's not reflective of that anymore. That, those heavy industries have moved out to the outskirts. They still have rail service, but it's, um, it's, it was really good vision on the city's behalf to work with Burlington Northern. They've been a, they've been a great partner. They're a big employer in Sioux Falls and in the state, uh, and they've been with us along this journey. Mark, um there's 10 acres of land. It's kind of split up uh, into what? Three parcels? Four? Well, how many? Yeah, three key parcels. Three key, there's okay. one large one south of 8th Street. Okay. There's another one that's between 8th Street and 6th Street, and then a small one north of 6th Street. So okay. frame it all up. There's three separate parcels, really divided up by 6th and 8th Street. And, and Darren Ketchum uh, earlier kind of talked about this, um, how, you know, eventually over time it'll all get redeveloped. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were the guy in the middle of this, you and Josh. Uh, I took, you know, I ended up with a lot of the credit, but Sioux Falls, this guy right here, along with Josh Peterson and some others, they deserve the, 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 the credit. But I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but I got it on camera now. <laughs> um, all right, you busted your butt on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you want to see down here? You know, I, I think that when you start to look at East Bank and you start to see some of the new buildings like the Hilton, you see 8th and Railroad, I want to see a reflection of that and really to keep some of that more uh, historic uh, piece, yeah. um, but also um, high density. Um, you know, just to, you've got in a downtown uh, mixed use, high density I think is really where um, we need to be. That's where other successful downtowns have been and, and this is really going to poise us to do that. So high density, Mark, sometimes that means, and you're an engineer guy, mm -hmm. that means instead of going out, you go up. That's right, or you know, down. You, or, or down. That's right. Or down. So explain that. Because um, really, what's the tallest building right now? Is it, would it be Washington Square in our yeah, downtown? Right, yeah, eight stories. You know, and I, you know, is we're land rich in South Dakota. Yeah. And so the typical development as you drive out into the outskirts is maybe, you know, on in general about three stories. Yeah. Um, we need to, I think, push that downtown yeah. and really get more on a, on, a, on a piece of land and marry it up with the right amount of parking and really enjoy it from a pedestrian, a bicyclist, a, uh, or someone that drives. Uh, Sioux Falls, this was expensive land. Um, we were fortunate that the United States taxpayers, uh, thanks to the help of uh, Senator Johnson, Senator Thune, and others, you know, they gave us $35 million to spend on their behalf on, uh, you know, improving economic development mm -hmm. in our downtown. So, Mark, I, I have to agree with you. You know, this was expensive land. We should have as much density mm -hmm. and utilization and productivity mm -hmm. as we can. So, you know, going down and going up, uh, I'd, I'd agree with you on that. Right. Um, uh, I, I would. Um, you know, it, Mark, did, it, yes, did take, it did take us uh, 10 years, but I think it's one of those factors that some of the original ideas were so big, so grandiose, bridges over the falls yeah. um, would have cost much more than what ultimately the earmark was. You know, the additional time, the change of different teams, somewhat the change of business for Burlington Northern Santa Fe, allowed for a very straightforward, environmentally friendly solution to come forward and ultimately to do it for about 75% of the original earmark. And so I, good job. I think from a, the time was worth the wait yep. to actually create a really good long-term, very low impact uh, environmental project. Even though we probably lost a couple of years on our life, Mark. We probably did, that's right. <laughs> but it was worth it. That's right, we hit a few brick walls. Yes, we, we did. We bounced back up. Yes, we did. All right, I'm gonna change directions just very, yep. now, a couple things. I was talking to people earlier, Mark, and they wanted to 
find a way to make this more pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. bike friendly. Uh, they said more crosswalks or safer crosswalks, maybe even a, a bike lane. Uh, you know, uh, uh, talk about that, would you mind? Sure, and so, you know, some of the conversion of these streets, it's already starting to happen. We see the tall planters over there. They're, they're somewhat dual purpose. They provide more visual barrier for and protection for bikers and pedestrians. They also just enhance the streetscape. Yeah. This section of A Street was reconstructed several years ago, and now, you know, we can do some things behind the curb to make that pedestrian experience more friendly, and you're starting to see that happen out here. Okay. Last question. Yeah. Uh, are those sirens from the railroads, are they ever going to go away? Uh, potentially. <laughs> really? Um, that's a that's a long exhaustive process just and probably not as long as this <laughs> not during my term no, no. but it's uh, it's possible uh, you have to build a lot of infrastructure okay. at the crossings to make sure people um, stay behind them okay. so they can ultimately uh, go whistle free you that's can't just wise. say Burlington Northern stop the dang whistles no no no, no. that's right. uh, and they they're there from a safety standpoint yep. Yep. Uh, but we'll take steps over the years to come to study the quiet zones and find good, reasonable solutions on where we can implement them. Mark Cotter, Department Head of uh, Public Works and so much more. Mark, Thank you. thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Mayor. Great job. On the East Bank here in downtown Sioux Falls, and, and I, uh, I'm coming out of the building and all of a sudden Alexa goes, hey, Mayor Mike, how you doing? And I said, I've got to talk to you, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, thank you. Tell us your name. What do you? Um, my name is Alexa Olson. I am a marketing intern for Sidecar here, and um, I currently go to school at Augustana University. What are you studying? I'm studying to be a media studies major with a, a minor in psychology. I love it. I love it. Where are you from, Alexa? Uh, born and raised? I was born right here in Sioux Falls. In Sioux Falls. Falls. Mm -hmm. I love it. So you're, you're here in Sioux Falls. You're, you're working at the East Bank here uh, at Sidecar. Um, why why do you think uh, this is such a hopping part of, of our town this this downtown uh, it's just always changing and like there's always new things to look around yeah. to find I know I didn't really even though I was born and raised here I wasn't really one to come downtown for whatever mm. oh, reason. oh this is the perfect <laughs> thank you um, thank you but since I've been working down here I've noticed that there's been a lot of really interesting things to find to do and I've often found myself just even after work or during my lunch just driving around and finding stuff to do, like going to Zanbro's, going to out to eat, or just even walking down the street here when it's nice out. Uh, Alexa, I know you were hesitant doing this interview, <laughs> but th that is exactly why I wanted to talk to you. Uh, Sioux Falls, I don't know if you caught that, but even Alexa said, you know, I really didn't know what was going on downtown. And until I got here, and then realized, wow, it's a, it's a, it's a happening place. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of change. I think you said. Definitely, it's a lot of change for the better. I think too, because even when I was younger, like there was stuff to do, but I, I feel like since it's grown, since Sioux Falls has grown, there's and there's just been so many new opportunities that I just love it. I'm definitely going to be visiting here a lot more now. Um, do you, 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 um, you work downtown. You said you shop downtown. You come to the uh, the special events in downtown. Um, when are oh, you? and and by the way, uh, Sioux Falls. I don't know if you caught that, but we've got a train <laughs> going by, uh, uh, wailing those sirens that we just talked about with Mark. Um, what I asked uh, Alexa is, is do you come to some of the special events downtown? Um, when I remember. Yes. But um, I find myself going to, I want to say they're called Twilight Movies. Oh, uh, oh gosh, yes. Yes, I can't exactly no, no, remember the right. name, but um, I come down there and watch some movies with my friends sometimes. It's really nice to just kind of relax and be out in the open. Is that near the Statue of David? Yes. Yes, okay. It's right in that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, you, folks, you can't imagine uh, whether it be the festivals or the special events, uh, such as the Twilight Movies near the Statue of David, um, uh, the first Fridays, the, oh, yeah. the, uh, the, the shopping, whether it be uh, on one of the top 10 shopping locations in America on Phillips or now the East Bank, which is just hopping with all these unique specialty shops. And, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, would, you, would you live downtown, Alexa? <laughs> I would. I actually used to, oh. but um, we moved out to another, the south side when it was being all innovative and yes. stuff like that. But 
I even did, it's just such a neat little area. I even did my some of my senior pictures down here Oh yeah. for high school. Um, but when you mentioned the fit, uh, first Friday of every month, that was always the best thing when I was little. And I haven't been able to, to attend because okay. I keep forgetting that it happens. Okay. But um, it's something that I've always enjoyed. There's the businesses here do so many awesome things during that time that it makes you definitely want to come down. Are you going to stay, I'm going to put you on the spot and you can just even, are you going to stay after you graduate from Augie? I really want to. Like, I love Sioux Falls so much. I've been to India before, and that's okay. awesome. But I feel like Sioux Falls is just that really nice hometown, but small town, big city feel, where everyone just kind of knows everyone. And I I can easily go to the mall or some business, and I'll be like, oh, I know that person. Yeah. But I just really love it here, and everyone's so nice. The community is welcoming, and you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a nice... Thank you, and thanks for uh, engaging me as I'm coming out. Yes. I, I know that you were maybe a little nervous uh, being on camp, but what you said is just wonderful uh, in terms of how downtown is changing, how it is a place where you'd want to at least come try it out, visit it. Uh, you're working downtown, mm -hmm. you're, you're playing downtown, you used to live downtown, and maybe you'll come back. and. And uh, so thank you. And, yeah. And uh, you are also one of the reasons why Sioux Falls is a great place to, to live. Why, thank you. Yeah, thank you. But and you're also one of them. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. You're very kind. Sioux Falls, uh, w what a great listening and learning session. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a beautiful day in, in downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, so certainly always love that. Being outside, doing this l and uh, a little differently. But today on the East Bank, I think we just learned so much uh, first of all, it is a hopping place. So many good things that are happening. This area is transforming uh, in just a, an amazing way. Uh, a lot of fun. It is the hopping place to, to now work, uh, to play, as well as to live. And guess what? You haven't seen anything yet. Um, we've got 10 acres of land that we're going to redevelop uh, you know, over the, over the years to come and it'll make this area even grander, more special, more unique, more fun. Uh, and yes, it will create economic development opportunities like you can't believe for generations to come. So again, uh, Sioux Falls, thank you. Uh, it is my birthday today. Uh, still working on your behalf, having a great time. But uh, again, I love this part of my role, uh, engaging the people of Sioux Falls. So if I can hang out with you people on my birthday, that's uh, all the present I need. Make it a great day, Sioux Falls. Take care.